In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The exposed wooden beams in the vaulted ceiling of this church, what architects call the trusses, serve to remind us that we are here in the body, the hull, of an upside-down ship. You, my dear faithful, are sitting, and I, for my sins, am standing, in what is known as the nave of the church, a small ship, a boat, what the gospel calls a navicula, sailing towards our eternal destination. Our church, Edward Welby Pugin's upside-down boat, is, like so many other traditionally designed churches, a figure of the one true church, the ark that will protect us from the flood on which we, enlisted through baptism, are all sailors. This ark, steered by the successor of St. Peter, overseen by the bishops in communion with him, is what will save us from the waves. Indeed, like Noah's ark at the great flood, it is our only way to salvation and contains everything that we need for salvation. Outside of the church, there is nothing that will save us. But it's not all plain sailing. Batten down the hatches because we're in for a storm. Not only is our boat leaking, but our poor little boat is tossed and blown about by a great relentless tempest. So much so that our boat is covered with waves and seems to be sinking. It's true today, but it was already true in the first centuries of the church. The Roman Catholic Church, as the storm-tossed boat of today's gospel, is an interpretation we find already in the Church Fathers, because even then, the Church of God, the Ark of Salvation, was battling the elements. The ship had barely left port when wave after wave of heresy threatened her maiden voyage, setting her off course. Gnosticism, which claimed you could be saved through secret knowledge revealed outside the structure of the church, an urge to jump ship. Arianism, which claimed our savior was not God, but a creature like us. So we might just as well swim to our salvation. So powerful was the storm of Arianism that at its peak, the majority of priests and bishops, indeed the Pope himself, signed up to this heresy. As Saint Jerome observed, the whole world woke up one morning to find itself Arian. A tidal wave battered the ship. And yet, it didn't sink. Century after century, heresy and conflict has assaulted the church. Clouds of darkness loomed over Rome at the turn of the second millennium, a period known as the Dark Age, when popes and bishops prostituted the church in financial corruption, sexual corruption, and worse still, spiritual corruption. Our boat was covered with waves, but it didn't sink. A thousand years later, and the storm rages on. Hurricanes with names like modernism, relativism, secularism, typhoons of immor immorality, decadence, and fraud. And yet, the boat will not sink. 
Why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? Like the disciples, we forget the presence of Christ, whose body we sail in, and of the Holy Ghost who keep us afloat. The boat cannot sink because it is unsinkable. But do we believe that? Do we consciously make an act of faith in God's church, in her hierarchy, in her indestructibility? Do we trust that it is only within the church, under the one vicar of Christ, within the structure of that leaky, storm-tossed boat, that we will be saved? Because Christ is there, and he, not we, will bring us to our destination. He will command the winds and the sea. He will calm the storm. Meanwhile, there'll be distractions. There'll be other ships that sail by, more sturdy, more robust, better to ride the waves, or so it would seem. Ships that are stocked with all you may need, so it would seem, to survive the dark days ahead. There will be messages, warnings, lights in the sky that will try to set us adrift, that will claim to offer protection within the boat, but in fact will push us overboard with fear. We must keep our focus. We must stay in the boat. Our guide is there, shining over the prow of the boat through the rose window of Edward Welby Pugin's upside-down ship. The bright queen, the star of the sea, she is the mother of the church, teacher of the apostles and vanquisher of all heresies. She can do nothing else but lead us to her son. She is our beacon of hope. As the universal doctor of the church, St. Thomas Aquinas puts it, as sailors are guided by a star to the port, so are Christians guided to heaven by Mary. A blessing I wish you all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.